Okay, here we go, guys. This is it. You can see the cup flying in now. In all its glory. Such a, such a special moment here as the cup comes in. It's so beautiful. Look at the top. Majestic. Truly mind blowing. Glorious. Glorious. It's the Moonberry Cup. Season 2. Race 2. Okay, uh, looks like everyone is uh, in position. So what we're gonna do, as we always do, is just quickly go over the guidelines. This is an any percent race. Uh, when the runners are ready, we're gonna start at the postcard screen. From the postcard screen, I'm gonna count down three, two, one, go. Try to sync those up as best as we can. After each level, we're gonna open up our journals. Uh, take a look at the times and we'll see where we're at. Uh, Prologue and Summit are the exceptions. They do not have postcard screens. So what we're going to do is we're going to ready up at the climb screen. Do the same countdown. Three, two, one, go. And we're going to get started that way. You're both feeling ready. Are right you guys ready? Front. Runners, are you ready? Uh, yeah. The uh, yeah, that's not up to be. Quick question, Drama. Yes. Uh, am I okay to talk during the race? Oh, yeah, absolutely. If you guys, um, the racers have the complete uh, control. If you guys want to talk or not talk, completely up to you. Uh, you will have to um, be able to hear us because just for the countdown, if you did yeah. want to, you know, deafen at some point, uh, that's okay. But it does add to the fun having me and Smoke um, commentary. Rattling in your ears. In your um, ears. I think both, I think you both, uh, I think both racers could do have been turned up for, uh, on stream, Mr. Pajama. Yeah, I've, uh, I've, him got him, well. I've got them maxed out on my end, so um, if you guys are able to on your ends, um, just boost yourselves either either on the mic or uh, in Discord itself. I'm going to try to stay as close to the mic as possible without peeking. Yeah, I don't I think... think I could be any louder, I'm afraid. Okay, that's cool. That sounded, that yeah, sounded I'll, better. I'll, but... I will have to do, yeah. I no worries. I being a bit quiet. I'll try to manage the uh, background music and everything so that it, so that uh, we can hear you guys. But okay, uh, whenever you're ready, um, get to the. You can see the screen that uh, Bean is on right now. That's where we want to be, and uh, we'll do a three, two, one countdown. We'll get right into prologue here. Oh yeah, let me just um. All right, okay. Yep. Okay, it looks like we're ready. Yeah, let's go. We are officially ready here, guys. We're going to count this one right into prologue and kick off uh, the races here. Oh, hang on. You good? I'm good. Okay. <laughs> okay. No selling in. Okay, no problem. Here we go. Prologue right, beginning go. in three, two, one, go. And we are off. This is Celeste, any percent speed run. If this is your first time... Uh, seeing the game, um, this game is absolutely uh, built for speed running, 100%. Yeah, I think from the ground up, they've they've really tried their best to make this the the best speed run experience that it could possibly be. Whoa. Fortunately, prologue, not not too fast. You're just hopping around, wait until you can uh, pick up your actual speed move for the rest of the game, which is the dash that you're going to get at the end of the bridge. Yeah, very quick. But you some, can see uh, both runners are lovely done, already prologues done. here. Very Look nice. at that. Beautiful. Very nice prologuing by both runners. Um, Bean, could you please, before we go into City, could you turn on your file timer? Oh, oh okay. yeah. Good point. Oh, Bill is already, Bill is I'm, off, so. That's all right. That's okay. He, uh, he backed out. We're good. Okay. All right, okay. I'm nice, nice, nice. Bill is ready to go. I, I just... keep, I keep think. Sorry, I keep thinking there's a, an additional screen, past that, and it isn't. Postcard yeah, it's screen, just this, yeah. uh, the yeah, postcard, yeah. and then. Uh, yeah, okay, right. Sorry. <laughs> but the rest of them we get it until. So, but... Yeah, don't. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Okay. I'm ready for the countdown. Okay, Bean is at the postcard screen. Let's get uh, Bill to the postcard screen. 
I want the postcard screen up. Oh, do you mean the menu? Um, the screen, uh, the screen with the postcard on it. One more. Go, go forward one more time. This one? Uh, no, this just one. hit continue, yep. Go into the, yep. Okay, one more. Okay, right here. This is the postcard screen. So oh, you can, yeah. You can pause sorry, right here. Sorry, yep. Sorry. So this is, yeah. that's okay. This is before every, uh, every chapter except for yeah. uh, Summit and Prologue. So this is where we'll ready up. If you guys need uh, a break, if you want to grab a cup of water or uh, use the bathroom, just don't go to the postcard screen. When I see the postcard screen, that means you guys are ready to go. Okay. And, uh, okay, let's get into city. City beginning in three, two, one, go. Okay, so this is um, this is a very quick, uh, quick level here, uh, city. Um, but it's uh, it, there's a lot of uh, a lot of tricky strats here, right, Smoke? Yeah, this is uh, an extremely optimized level. It's very short, but uh, a lot of this, the tricks that you see on every single screen have been so optimized at this point that each runner I know will have a certain time in their mind. Uh, probably around the minute 15, minute 20 mark that they're, they're really looking for their cities to be. I know a lot of people that if they take a death or two in city, they're, they're automatically out of that run. It's a, it's a very fast reset. I think it's because you know that you can do it to a certain level. And I think that if you speed run this game to any level, city is probably the, uh, the level that you begin with trying to get down, really get all your tricks down and nailed. It's really, uh, it's a really interesting level. I know yeah, a few it's... runners that don't enjoy it, but I really like this level. It's a great level, and it's uh, it's very short, um, and it's very close to the beginning of the game. So I think, yeah, you do see a lot of people who are uh, resetting. But that's just one of the things that makes uh, racing special is uh, you you can't reset. You have to commit, Absolutely. Um, and it makes things a uh, definitely adds an element of a uh, challenging element that um, you know a lot of times people don't get to experience. So uh, both runners are actually really really close right now. Um, you can see them both setting up for a really cool trick here where they're actually gonna it looks like they're gonna jump off of a spike here on the corner and they're just uh, taking advantage of um, it's called a spike jump it's just kind of like a I guess it's like a pixel that uh, you're able to jump off of and wow sync synced up to the very finish nicely done very nice so yeah not that much time apart at all uh, in those I think the only time really apart is uh, is Bill going into the level I think that for the most part, it's it was quite a, a level playing field right there. Yeah, let's take a look at the uh, journals. You can hear Bean got his uh, Bean got the journal up, and it looks like his city was a uh, 136. Nicely done. Yeah, not bad at all. And uh, Bill had a 145, so we're only oh wait, uh, 135. Yeah, 135. Um, so I mean, we're talking about a yeah, second. Yeah, we're in the second of each other. Second. Yeah, absolutely. Very good. Okay. I don't know about you, Bean, but a good city for me is about 120. Yeah, that's about the same for me. Yeah. I think Maybe that's... like the uh, stop minute range for me, actually, now that I think about it. I think that's, uh, as we were saying, Mr. Majama, it's the, the, the whole race thing, that maybe that would have mm -hmm. been a, a reset in any other run, seeing the, the plus 10, 15 seconds. But that's it, taking those couple of deaths. You, you're just moving on in the race, so yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, cool as, we're, as we're going to see here, as we head into old site, um, the first two chapters are, are pretty short, and um, not a whole lot of time swings are, are going to happen. You're not going to see one runner up uh, ahead by two minutes uh, or behind by two minutes after the first couple <laughs> of chapters. So, um, another another quick uh, level coming up here in old site. Uh, when you guys are ready, let's uh, head to the postcard screens. We'll do the countdown. Okay, looks like runners are ready. Let's begin old site in three, two, one, go. I'm looking forward to watching old site. This is one of my favorite levels to run at the moment. Uh, I agree, Smoke. And um, part of it for me is just the the aesthetic, the vibe. This is a very like dreamy, mm. um, dreamy level. And um, but yeah, in terms of uh, in terms of the movement, there's a lot of a lot of cool tech, um, and you can see both runners here, or the bean actually um, doing a, a quick uh, cutscene uh, manipulation there. 
and taking the I'm early lead here is me. I'm gonna teach you how to to save that. Don't don't you worry. <laughs> yeah. So here we uh, after the mirror sequence, you see all these uh, dream blocks now able to be activated, which is uh, some of the coolest movement in the game. I guess I used to really dislike these and just think that they were kind of throw away but i've started to enjoy the uh the dream box more and more you get some really fast movements through uh through this level yeah you see the uh the players now uh coming uh in contact with battle lines the first time we're seeing battle line and uh, what she does is she mirrors the player's movements um but if you touch her you take a death so um that's going to be just another element for them to uh, contend with here as uh, the bean uh, playing nice and smooth and has the early lead here. Yeah, she can be she can be really scary, especially on these these longer rooms. If you mess up a strat and you know you, you have to realign yourself, you've got battling to deal with immediately after what you're doing. So yeah, mm -hmm. it exactly be, right. It can be really difficult. Yeah, battling makes uh, it kind of amplifies mistakes, um, and uh, the, you can see the the screen that Bill is on and the screen that Bean is on. Both of these screens are um, among the more challenging and longer screens in terms of uh, time loss. This is really where uh, Run can, can struggle, and you can see already that uh, Bill has closed the gap. The Bean struggling here on this final screen, allowing uh, Bill to uh, catch up completely. Yeah, there's a lot of um, tight, tight moves to be, to be getting in here, and it can be really difficult just hovering between uh, Badlin, as we said. But both of them look as though they've made it through that, yeah, that both final through. screen. Nicely done, and into the final section here. Yeah, what we're about to look at is probably single-handedly the most competitive subchapter in the entirety of Celeste, which is Awake. You can get some really uh, clean movement through here. Yeah, this Awake section is, uh, you can see these like springboards, um, and a lot of, there's no real danger, it's just a lot of... Uh, Kind of hills and things for you to get caught on so uh, runners are going to do their best to maintain their momentum through here and, and get through as quick as possible you can see the bean wrapping it up and bullet bill right behind we're going to see probably some pretty close times here nicely done by both runners yeah there we go too much time to let's take a look at those journals smoke what do we see all right so 242 old site on uh on the inside and what we're seeing over here for uh yeah 251 so only 10 seconds uh apart really is is really anyone's game at this point as we were saying you're not going to see a lot of disparity between times uh in these early levels i uh, like to always say that celestial resort is where the run starts so yeah just something i noticed can can the runners turn on the game uh, game timer oh we'll do it after the next uh We'll do it after the next I think cause... that's just on the screen before. I think oh, the, I see, the I third see. screen across is just okay. speed run time. So next it's time, full yeah. file timer on the second screen. Okay, yeah, we got to see those full file timers after the next one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, perfect. All right, we'll take a look at that after uh, Celeste Resort. Okay, looks like runners are in position. Let's begin Celestial Resort in three, two, one, go. This is a dreaded part of the uh, the speed room. Yeah, Resort is, um, you know, I think casually, also in terms of the speed run, uh, the difficulty really ramps up. The first couple of chapters, uh, as you saw, were, were pretty quick, pretty short chapters. And uh, the resort is uh, is not. It's not quick or short. No, there's a there's a lot to be done here before you can move on, especially the the early stage learning this uh, this run. You know, when you're trying to get your your sub hour time, maybe maybe you're trying to bring it down a little bit further. Having the route down for this level is going to really really help you, because it can be really difficult um, getting your way through all these rooms. And obviously now we've got the cycles to worry about with these these meatballs or fuzzies or whatever it is that you choose to call them. Dust bunnies, I think, is the uh, the correct phrase. But 
it yeah, can be uh, it can be awkward coming into rooms. You've got two cycles to worry about if you uh, if you do take a death in the room. You've got to have your entry cycle. You've got to have your your death cycle. There's really a lot of homework that can be done on this level. Yeah, these uh, the true lore here is these um, glowing, you know, red and black. These are dust bunnies because it's a dirty, dusty hotel. But I think everybody everybody knows they're actually meatballs, meatballs of death. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, the most yeah, aggressive meatballs out there. As Smoke said, this is a really difficult chapter to uh, to learn to speed run uh, because there's so much. It's such a long uh, chapter. There's so much going on. You can see the bean now on the uh, the huge mess screen. This is a giant kind of a maze of um, books and towels, and um, it can be really tricky to navigate uh, without uh, doing it quickly. Um, and then each runner is going to make their way to three uh, separate areas in order to clear up the uh, stage and, and make their way to the roof. Bean's playing some very uh, clean Celeste right now, actually. I've, yep. I know Bean's been grinding for uh, the sub-45 for a yep. little bit. This is this is some very, very nice play. Yeah, the Bean has an um, uh, early lead here as Bill makes his way to uh, Oshiro to unlock the uh, first section. And the Bean is uh, finishing up the first section. So... Um, something that we talk a lot about, uh, smoke, uh, with speed running is, uh, just playing, uh, playing clean is very important. Trying not to die. It seems obvious, but, um, you know, some, I think some runners will just try and go as fast as they can and maybe take, uh, more deaths than they should. And then, uh, more seasoned runners will understand that, uh, actually playing cleaner will, will net you a better time in the end. Absolutely. I think there's, there's something to be said for... Maybe not taking the, the, the fastest strats that you possibly can if you know mm -hmm. that you're not going to hit them consistently. I do a lot more kind of slightly slower strats just to make sure that none of my runs uh, are going to die in the, in the mid to late game, especially. At this point, there's, you know, a lot of time to be uh, lost, but there's, there's not a load of time to be, to be gained here. You, you're really looking at the, the later chapters that are going to save you a lot of time playing cleanly but uh on some of these later screens in this level especially when we get to the oshiro section oh yeah there's a lot of uh, a lot of scary time loss that can happen the dreaded oshiro section you can see uh the bean has wrapped up the uh cleanup portion of the chapter and he's taken the key he's going to go and unlock uh the pathway to the roof Um, and uh, coming up, I don't know if we're going to see it, but one of the cooler tricks um, in the game called the Demo Dash. Are we going to see a Demo Dash Bean? I think, uh, I think we've got to see... Mode. Yeah, definitely in full focus mode. He's popping off. <laughs> I think we've, uh, I think we're going to see some Demo Dashes today. I feel like that's one of the, the big speedrunning tricks in this game that, that you want to learn to make your, your run look flashy. Oh yeah, it looks really cool. It looks like magic. You're going to see it again here coming up on the bean screen. You're going to see a wall of those uh, Dust Bunny meatballs. Um, let's see. Yep, he's going to go for it. So you can actually... Yep. First try. No big deal. It's a tricky uh, maneuver there. Made it look easy, but you can uh, compress your body and squeeze through that wall. Um, and there's a, there's a little bit of a window there that allows you to squeeze through. Yeah, there's two two separate setups for uh, the demo dash, and then there's two war and clans either side of these setups, trying to decide which one is the best. We see the uh, the two pixel setup there. Yep, and now we're introduced to Angry Oshiro. You can see on the bean screen, uh, he has uh, Oshiro has transformed now into kind of a ghost, and is uh, attacking Madeline here. And um, that's just another thing, a lot to contend with here. You've got the uh, Dust Bunny meatballs, you got Oshiro flying at you. You've got these uh, transforming like tendrils that will kill you if you um, once they activate. And the whole the whole time you're also trying to do this all very fast without dying. So a lot going on. If you play with the music on as well in this game, Lena Rain does an incredible, incredible job of making you feel the uh, the emotions. So oh, you absolutely. feel very stressed out in this section with Shiro chasing you and everything popping off as well. 
Yeah, there definitely are um, some parts in this game where the action is high, but the music is kind of chill. This is not one of them. This is one where uh, they want you to feel the stress and the pressure, and uh, the being feeling the pressure there, taking a death towards the end of the screen. Again, this is the final screen of the stage, and it's a long screen, and it is punishing. If you get caught uh, towards the end, you're going to lose a lot of time. You can see Bill now at the demo dash screen. Yeah, just struggling with this demo dash. It's a very difficult trick. It's it, one that yeah. every single time I open up Celeste, I make sure to practice this move. It really is, and he's Making decided sure to, to uh, five in a row. Decided to abandon it, and um, very maybe a wise play there. Uh, you can see there the casual route, which is to head down and grab the key. It doesn't uh, cost a ton of time, but Bullet Bill handled it well there. Uh, that room can sometimes get you stuck, and you can spend a lot of time. A very nice uh, resort for, for Bean. And we're just going to see Bill finishing up this section. Yeah, nicely done by Very Bean. clean, yeah, very, very clean, clean room there for uh, for Bill. That room always gives me bother, the one after the, the demo dash. I can hit demo dash first try, but I won't hit the, uh, the room after it first try uh, on any attempt. Let's all send our energy here in chat for a nice clean finish here for Bill. Uh, this whole section on the roof uh, with Oshiro is um, is really tricky to speedrun. Not just the final screen, uh, but the, it does seem like the um, difficulty kind of ramps up as you go. The final screen being the hardest and the, uh, the most costly in terms of time loss if you make mistakes. Yeah, definitely. There's, there's a certain couple of rooms as well that if you are kind of a... Uh a certain level you know that there should be tricks that you're hitting if if you miss them you're you're gonna die mm -hmm. there's a little bunny hop in this room that i i miss it 10 times out of uh, <laughs> 10 times out of 10 but i still go for it every time and in the hope yeah and that's another thing just in terms of uh speed running uh, mentality in general uh that i spoke about before but i think it's worth uh it's worth repeating is there's always a constant kind of a struggle in the speed running this game um, where you have a strat that you know is fast, um, but maybe you maybe you make a mistake, you don't hit it, and then you have to decide: Do I try it again and and risk losing time, or do I just do the um, do the standard way and just play it safe? And it's a, it's an eternal, I think, eternal struggle um, internally, you know, in in speedrunners' minds. Bullet Bill wrapping it up. Well done. Yeah, you beat a both runners. Wow, that was an awful result. <laughs> So we are seeing a little bit of uh, a time disparity now. This can happen with the resort. This is why I said going yeah. in that this is where the run really starts. That if you have a bad resort, it can uh, it can really tell you. Uh, runner, uh, run can we go to the page just yeah. before this Runners, one? Runners, if you could, yeah, just go to the page before this one. We want to be able to see the chapter times and the full time. There we go. Perfect. Okay, Smoke, what do we got? Got a little bit of delay. And now I'm here. All right, so we've got, uh, we've got around... Uh, Pretty much all the time that was lost there for Bill uh, is the the time between the two times. We've got thirteen twenty one from Bill, uh, but an eleven twelve uh, from Bean, which so, is yeah. about there was two a minutes, very clean yeah. resort there. About two minutes, that, but uh, yeah, going ahead, I think um, it's still anybody's race. There's a lot more game to go and a lot absolutely. of uh, the golden rich coming out of a lot of that uh, can go wrong. Yep. And this is where, as I was saying, this is where the time disparities start to happen. It's, it's coming into the mid and late game after you get all these longer rooms that are gonna actually take a bit of time if you if you take some deaths absolutely okay runners if you're ready uh, let's go to the postcard screen of golden ridge okay it looks like we are good to go so let's get into it golden ridge beginning in three two one go just looked over at chat and seen Cordovia's message. I assume we'll be seeing second blockless. Cordovia, I can only imagine that to be true, yes. Which I don't even know which one is second blockless. Is that the... Um... Second blockless, I think, is the one with the ceiling pop. Oh, ceiling pop. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, a, the, uh, the that's a strat that's uh, reserved for uh, the fastest runners, I would imagine. Um <laughs> Not something most most runners practice. Oh at. no, my bad. That one is first. Second block is. Oh, second um, is second is bad. Okay. Key coin. Oh yeah, we okay, may see so... that. One. Yeah, yeah, we may see that one. 
Um, but yeah, so this Golden is Golden Ridge is, is an annoying chapter. Golden Ridge is an annoying chapter. Golden Ridge is, yeah. is, is difficult because uh, you can see uh, these kind of white lines representing the wind here. Golden Ridge is windy, and that affects everything that the players do. Jumping, <laughs> dashing, falling. Uh, it just kind of throws you off. Everything that you've learned up until now in terms of movement uh, just gets kind of tossed aside because you have this new element to deal with. And there's also, uh, it's, a, it's a strat, it's a speed running strat rich um, level. It seems like every screen has some kind of strat that you're trying to pull off. Absolutely, absolutely. The, uh, the only thing that you can do to counteract the wind is, is the, the fast speed movements. Otherwise, you're going to just be just hemorrhaging time. The, the amount of time that you can lose by just wandering around in, in ridges. Absolutely absurd. Yeah, and there's also, uh, you can see uh, Bill now on an auto-scroller. There's a few auto-scroller screens which are notoriously uh, slow uh, auto-scrollers. And one of the things that uh, the runner's going to try and do is uh, uh, skip them if possible or do something to speed them up. And you can see uh, Bill here trying to pull off a, uh, a, a trick which uses the momentum of the block to push... Uh, Madeline and then if you do an extended hyper you can get an extra boost and avoid having to ride this all the way over there it is nicely yeah, done it's, uh, it's a hard time in sync but that said these are these auto scrollers aren't the fastest thing in the game and if you're, you're relying on them for moving you around as I said you're going to lose a lot of time so trying to use the momentum there to, to force yourself through that screen a bit quicker you can see the and bean now is, on the, this is yeah, second, the block. second block list. He's doing, uh, he, he, he did uh, an extended there at the end, which he was made, able to make a little bit faster. Uh, he did not do the um, the flex strat there, which saves a little bit of time, but probably smart. Yeah, I'm, I'm not hitting that, that trick, honestly. It's a little bit uh, a little bit scary. Yeah, really clean stuff here from Bean. He's already to the final section, which is known as cliff face. You can see the wind here really pushing now really annoying here they're just behind getting some really nice movement through these screens oh, are we is bill setting up for the blockless here it looks like he is oh, oh nope oh and uh we're also seeing another element here this is um these are the snowballs only appearing in uh cliff face um, once again, all this, you can see the bean just taking a snowball to the face right there. All the, everything that's going on uh, with the wind and uh, all the dangers. Now we have snowballs flying in as well. Yeah, when I when I said annoying, I, I really meant it. The amount of things <laughs> that they throw at you in this level is just, it's just absurd. Just let us go fast through the level and get to the end, please. This is, this is ridiculous, Maddy. We don't need this. Both I didn't buy now. this game twice on two platforms to have to deal with this. Oh, speaking of this game, guys, um, I, we are giving away two copies of Celeste for the wow. PC. If you guys are interested, exclamation point Discord. Uh, hop into our Discord, and you'll be able to join. You'll be able to uh, enter the raffle there. Um, I know a lot of people probably already have it. Uh, but it is, uh, it's a key, it's a Steam key, so you can give it to someone, give it to a friend, uh, or give it away on, on your stream, doesn't matter what you do with it, um, we just want to spread the, spread this game around. This is one of the best games of all time, and, uh, I think more people need to, need to know about it. Absolutely, I'm trying to get everyone to play this game. My housemate is a Call of Duty player, you should just try out Celeste, but I think you'd really like it. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> it's honestly a game that's, it, it really is, like, people, I think, say it. You know, sometimes, oh, this is a game for anybody, but it really feels like a game for anybody. Uh, the, the difficulty is, uh, it's a challenging game, but it they do such a brilliant job of, of ramping up the difficulty, teaching you as you go, uh, using the checkpoints to keep you motivated, even through difficult sections. And um, I think even if you're not really into platformers, well, I think, I remember Smoke, actually, um, when, when you first got in this game, I remember you telling me that you're not really into platformers. I'm I'm still not into platformers. I really like Celeste, but I still don't like platformers. GG, both runners completed Golden Ridge. Nicely done. A 411 Golden Ridge out of uh, being that's really uh, very that's really, uh, very on pace with a 45 PB. That's that's very on 45 pace. Yeah.
I think Episode that's a golden... Episode 45. Well, oh, that was a golden gold split for you? I'm pretty sure, yeah. I think like my gold is Nicely done. Absurd. Okay, Bill is ready to move on. I don't think he wants to look at, look at the timer here. Let's uh, maybe just get, <laughs> no, right into, get right into Mirror Temple here. We can look. It's all right. We can look. <laughs> <laughs> Bill's gonna cover his eyes, but we can. We can another about it looks like about another minute um, added to so about probably about three minutes. But again, and, uh, and you guys who know this game and know speed running, three minutes at this stage is still definitely anyone's game. Uh, Bill's gonna have to hope that Bean makes some mistakes here, um, but it's it's still absolutely anyone's race. Yeah, the first time I ran uh, Moonbury race, I was you know on for for PB going into summer and then choked two minutes away so it's easily done it's yeah, easily done absolutely anything can happen okay looks like the runners are in place to begin let's dive into mirror temple in three two one go welcome in everybody thanks again this is the moonberry cup any percent races we are currently uh, featuring bullet bill and the bean in the middle of a speed run. Chemical Alpaca, welcome in. Dawn is here. Cordovia, Captain Peel card. What's up, guys? Mirror Temple is uh, one of my favorite levels. And, Super uh, cool. It, it's such a cool level. And you can see one skip here on the beans, uh, the bean screen. Affectionately known as the Ickle Skip. Both runners are trying it. You can avoid having to take uh, a bubble from the left. If you do a uh, reverse, there we go. Both runners nailing it. Nicely done. Almost the same time. Reverse extended hyper through that corridor of spikes. It's a very confusing trick when you start learning the uh, the advanced movements of this game and you start hearing all the words and you hear super and hyper mm -hmm. and wave dash. And then someone says, oh yeah, just through this section, you're just going to do a reverse extended hyper. Yeah, it's you're just not like this head in hands. I don't know how I'm ever going to learn how to play this game. Absolutely. Uh, but but it starts uh, becoming easier and easier as, as time goes on, and both runners nailing some of the uh, the tricks here. Smoke, did you ever speed run a game before this one? Uh, apart from trying to run uh, DS3 any percent glitchless, I uh, this was my first prop foray into speed running. And I think it's because it's so inviting. And as we were saying about... You know, the Celeste ramping up the difficulty. It really ramps up the ability to, to learn and you really feel yourself get faster at it. It's a really obvious thing when you get faster at Celeste and you learn a new trick and just your movement starts to come together more and more. So I think it's just a, a really inviting game. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And that's what I wanted to mention is, um, you know, the Moonberry Cup is here to showcase speedrunners and speedrunning and celeste and it's such a brilliant game uh for speedrunning if you've ever considered doing it this is the game i would recommend and um a lot of a lot of games like you hear these extended hypers and reverse wave dashes and it seems very intimidating at first but i assure you the the, it, the community is here to help you out if you want to get started with it mm -hmm. and um yeah it's just it's just so much fun and i think everyone who plays it would agree it's one of the best communities around if you ever have a question about anything that you hear in a Celeste stream about a strategy or a move or just something that you don't understand, do just go into Mr. Majama's Discord and ask in Celeste General. Excuse me, I heard this earlier and I'm not really sure what it means. Mm -hmm. And any amount of people will come uh, and help you out. It's really the most uh, incredible community is the Celeste community. Everyone just wants everyone to get faster. So uh, Mirror Temple here, we're seeing uh, both players now into the uh, Seeker section. These are kind of, uh, I guess it's like a squid. I don't know what these are. It's uh, some kind of octopus, evil octopus squid. Um, they, uh, I think that's almost exactly what it is, Mr. Majama. That's exactly evil what it is, right? Squid. <laughs> it's an evil octopus squid. This is, um, they, they kind of chase you down. This is the closest thing to uh a random rng effect the game has even though they're not technically rng they they seem like they have a mind of their own sometimes they kind of uh well they seek is what they do they seek on they're like homing missiles and they will uh attack you when you yeah, use the expect. same way that um that share works you can see that they've got a little charge up for their uh their charge at you and then they're they're on their way 
they do have a little bit of a, a difference to assure in that they can move anywhere mm-hmm. on an axis so the the very scary of the seekers especially when you get ones that that you're you're not used to if you you mess up your strat even by you know a few pixels here and there you can aggro a seeker where you don't want them mm-hmm. to be and all of a sudden the room becomes way scary yeah a lot of these it's uh... really nice to see two five a's though i will say that it is nice. Well, I'm sure we're going to see a 5B in the next race, but you can see the bean right now uh, coming up to one of the most important skips in the game and nails it first try. That uh, little skip there saves uh, at least a full minute, probably more. Um, but most runners, uh, when they get to running this game, this is the first skip that they learn, and, um, and rightly so. It, it saves a ton of time. Both runners first trying it. Nice yeah, and same for uh, same for Phil. So this is another one of those occasions that it is one of the first things that you learn. But you are doing a reverse, uh, reverse extended super there. It's just not mm-hmm. something that you ever think about at the time of learning it. You just think these are the inputs and this is what I do. But you are doing one of the advanced movement mechanics there. Yeah, it's, now you can see uh, the bean uh, has uh, crystal crystal Theo here, which is uh, it's kind of an escort mission. Um, Theo does change your favorite. Everyone's favorite, Theo. <laughs> uh, he does change your uh, movement here because when you're holding him, he really slows you down. Uh, so you're going to see uh, the runners trying to kind of throw Theo ahead and then and run and catch him. Uh, it's a little bit faster that way. And uh, again, a lot to deal with here. You've got these doors you have to unlock. You've got seekers coming at you. You've got Theo you have to, you can't leave behind. So a lot happening. And both runners very uh very in sync here. This is not too far away from each other at all. Unlike the disparity we might have seen in, in some of the other levels. Seems like Bill's got this one down. Yeah, very clean. Very cleanly done. Yeah, there's some uh there's some cool stress in this. A lot of people kind of have this um uh, have this idea that that because five B, you know, cuts off 30 seconds at a high end Ooh. maybe a little bit more if you're not playing uh 5a too well that you should learn 5b as soon as possible in your in your speed run but i mean there's, there's a lot of time to be saved in 5a if you can get a, a 6x which which i'm sure we're going to see here from from both runners that's that's pretty decent at this level yeah and just to clarify um in any percent you can run any chapters that you want uh, and um, the speedrunning community figured out that it's actually faster if you play uh, this stage up until the cassette. Each level has a cassette which unlocks a B-side, which is a more uh, challenging uh, version of the level. Uh, it's actually faster to get the cassette and complete the B-side than it is to finish the uh, A-side. Um, but again, typically, uh, from what I've seen for speedrunning this game, most players... Uh, just run 5A all the way to the end like you're seeing both uh, these runners do um, up until a certain point and that's usually around uh, 40 minutes when they're trying to maybe get a sub 40 is when uh, they'll start to learn uh, start to learn the B side yeah absolutely it's, uh, it's actually way easier than, than I at first thought it was but it's a very cool level to, to learn okay nicely done both runners GG that's near Temple down. So we've got a 2156 from Bean coming out of uh, Mirror Temple, which is kind of crazy unless Bean throws it over yeah. the next two levels. We're definitely Should be on a, a sub 45 on the on, cards. We're though. on PB pace for sure on Bean screen. Yeah. And uh, Bill now at 25.58. So again, about a you know four minutes or so difference with uh, Reflection to come, and then Summit, which is a beast of a level. Um, we're gonna we're gonna maybe have a race here. Hopefully, uh, B- Bill is hoping that Bean uh, makes some mistakes here. But uh, both runners uh, prepared now to enter Reflection. Yeah, by by all means, it's not a uh, it's not been a particularly bad run from from Bill. We're not seeing too much go wrong, especially in you know in the, these these mid game chapters. Just that Bean's playing out of his goddamn mind. Yeah, it's true. It's true. He's, sometimes the sometimes the race element on the really G fuel today brings out the best. You know, the G fuel is popping. <laughs> 
Okay, looks like we're ready to get into reflection. Both runners are in place. Let's begin in three, two, one, go. I don't want this music. Here we go, okay. So you can see uh, right away something um, introduced here in reflection that's that's pretty unique, and that's these uh, that's these feathers. Feather yeah, smoke. Absolutely. Tell us about feather smoke. So Bean's got a natural advantage here because he plays the game on analog stick anyway. Um, I do as well. These... Oh, oh my analog Lord. gang! We've got two analog. Wow, players. let's go. Interesting. Love to see it. Um, so we've got two naturally gifted feather users here, uh, and what what the feathers are? Uh, they're kind of a short lasting multi-directional uh little little worm i would say like power <laughs> up but i don't really know if it's no i'm not really sure up, i'm not uh... really sure what it what it kind of is but it's not it, it doesn't last too long you can you can make it last longer and you can go faster so long as you're not turning through an arc too too much so what you want to be seeing with the feathers is you know really minuscule movement really small turns mm -hmm. it's around 17 degrees where you're going to start losing speed uh, which on some of the layer screens in, in Reflection can be it can be a little difficult. There's a lot of stuff going on with the, the bumpers and and the feathers. You both, can start uh, losing some time. Both runners here. It, ha it happened so fast. I was gonna I was gonna call it out, but both runners um, taking advantage of a, a, a technique called neutral jumping, which allows you basically to uh, climb a wall forever. There's um, a mechanic built into the game, a stamina mechanic. There's no meter for it, but you are limited in terms of what you can do uh, while climbing. You, know, you can't climb forever, and uh, climb, jumping, use a stamina. Once you're out of stamina, you, you can't climb anymore, but uh, there's a way to climb forever using a technique called neutral jumping, which allows you to kind of um, climb. You jump off the wall and then climb, and then it's... We actually have a, an episode of Speed School later today that's going to talk more about it. But. Yes, um... They tried really hard to, to make everything about this game kind of leveled and fair and, you know, going through each level, there's, there's certain mechanics added and whatnot. And then speedrunners, shaking my head, came break the entire game by just yeah. finding about, about neutral jumps. And you really just hate to see it, really. Great game made, just, just torn apart by speedrunners. games. Just hate to see it. Even hate with all it. the... Uh you know preparation for this being a speed run game and the developers have admitted there's a, a bunch of stuff i think neutral jumping was actually you know intended to be discovered um, and a lot of the advanced movement tech was also intended even with that there's still things um that speedrunners have done to this game that the developers did not anticipate yeah no there's uh there's some some crazy stuff in this game as, I, as you said i've said there's there's definitely stuff that they put in there to make the game you know very fast very doable but i imagine the developers still would watch you know one of the the sub 30 runs and go this is this is yeah nuts. we never this we never nuts. expected this both runners taking top route as well uh, this is a this is a level that gives the player uh choices and uh, there's a few uh, branching um sections where you can choose top route or bottom route uh, both runners taking the top route And um, long vertical screen here that the bean is on. There's a few uh, directional uh, choices here. Uh, some pathing stuff you can see. You can kind of squeeze through a narrow gap in the spikes here and get you down to the bottom a little bit faster. Yeah, this is another one of the uh, the dev intended skips that they've put in, which again, you, you love to see that kind of stuff. The sort they've put in for people to be flexing. This water section that Bean's doing now probably my least favorite part of the entire game. Yeah, I'm always very grateful Great. that they didn't uh, they didn't make a whole level with the underwater spikes. There's, that's literally the yeah. only the only section in the whole game right there. I know that Meta Glory was working on an underwater mod level. When I saw it, I was mad. <laughs> I do not want to be playing underwater levels. No. Let me see uh, Bean moving on to the battling section now. So it's a bit of a flip reverse from all the battling stuff in the past, and the mm -hmm. you want to be get uh, you want to be getting close to, to battling here on each screen. Yeah, that's the first. Sure, that's yeah. the first time 
I have, I think I have like 400 hours in this game. I'd never even thought about that, but that's so true, Smoke. The first time you see Badlin, she's chasing you. And uh, mm -hmm. when she touches you, you die. And uh, now in this section, the roles are reversed. Badlin is, uh, I mean, she's got some defenses. She shoots these lasers at you, but um, yeah, the goal is to uh, the goal is to attack her. Absolutely, you, you you see it in various parts of the the lore to this game with the level being called Reflection, um, battling being the, the the part of yourself that that you're that you're struggling with. This is this is Maddie really looking within to try and find something to fight against this uh, this force that's telling her that she can't do it, and she's doing really well. She's doing really well. Yeah, really well said. There. We're all very proud of her. GG. There's some really nice movement through uh, through these screens as well. I really like this this section of the game. I think this is a very cool like boss fight element to to this game that they didn't even have to do, but it just it works so well and it it's, it's such a cool section. Yeah, it's interesting to think of like how can I make a boss fight in a game with no weapons and and absolutely uh, you know it's that kind of. The, the the sonic idea of just bouncing off the uh, the head of, of Dr. Robotnik, but this Dr. Robotnik has octopus hair and fires laser beams. <laughs> Cybernetic upgrades. Uh, absolutely. Pretty clean here from both runners. Yeah, it's almost uh, difficult to catch if anything's going wrong because I'm looking over at both screens and there's some, some some very clean stuff going on. Yep, the bean um, with the uh, early advantage here, it looks like. Hey, Calcium, welcome in. Yeah, very nice stuff. So, bean's just moving on to the, uh, the, the last section here. You get our last little conversation with uh baddie and then she gets she gets extremely aggressive these last few rooms are, are very very aggressive very fast rooms that you go and move through and she's constantly pressuring you uh bill just uh coming up behind as well not too much in this level at all this uh this mid mid late game has been very uh very competitive yeah, both very solid rooms. but again uh coming up on summit summit is the final chapter and it's uh, very long, extremely long, longest by far. And um, I would, I think it's fair to say that a, a, a three-minute lead is not safe at going into Summit. No, absolutely. I, I mean, on the flip side of that, if I were in a three-minute lead in Summit, that would probably make me choke harder than anything <laughs> uh, possible. We've, we've seen that happen. As possible. Yeah. I don't like being ahead going into Summit. I think there's a lot to be said for, you know, Bill now kind of, playing some really really nice Celeste maybe was was suffering a little bit earlier on but that's kind of one of the reasons why uh, even still to to the kind of 45 mark why you should just carry on your runs mm -hmm. why resetting isn't always the best option you might have the the reflection or the summit of your life and and really tear off like a, a load of time yeah I absolutely. think that it's it's a lot to be said for for completing runs yeah I always recommend that and um when you're speed running just because i mean yeah you could have a bad start and then uh you could have a you know a gold split reflection um and I, you know any gold is uh is reason enough to uh, to celebrate so absolutely i'm a big fan of finishing runs a nice reflection there from being nice reflection. 17. bill just coming up on the last couple of screens here a little tactical crouch there, I love it. So with a, uh, looks like a 30-17 for the Bean, he's uh, about 15 minutes, he needs a 15 minute summit for, uh, to be around his PB. Bean needs to relax. Can't handle it. Love to see PBs at the Moonberry Cup. Absolutely. Final uh, fight screen here for Bill, and uh, it's a scary one. Oh, there's a yeah, that's, absolutely. Uh, the uh, back end of this room is just is, is so frightening. It's very tricky. You have the, the feathers. You have this laser beam coming at you, um, 
and it's yeah, it's very unsettling. Uh, even at um, at any level, I think, even if your PB is yeah, uh, definitely. forty minutes or fifty minutes, it's still it's it's tricky and it's it's easy to die. I did a I did a any percent tutorial series uh, the last week, couple of weeks, and when I was going through the the final section of the the battle and fight, I really realized how much it you know would just change automatically to having a bad screen if you got you know a slight misstep wrong mm -hmm. it's one thing to be said for you know doing it midway through a run but when you're racing when you're doing something else it can can quickly take a, a different turn okay Which nicely the done there bill well. nice nice wrap up and um let's take a look at the uh times here one last time before we head into summit remember guys there's no postcard screen in summit so we're going to go to the screen that says climb and we'll do the countdown there but for now uh, it looks like um, about five minutes, five, maybe six minutes. Uh, yeah, about six minutes right on the dot. Uh, lead yeah, or not beam. Bad, not at all. I think that there's, there's obviously a little, uh, a couple of things here and there that have that have gone wrong in, in Bill's run, but it's it's not a bad run by any means. It's it's really just a couple of levels at the beginning that have, yeah, you know, maybe just comes down to, uh, if you look at the that column there with the skulls, I think it just comes down to deaths um you know half the deaths for being that's what we were talking about earlier cleaner is better uh sometimes even if you have to go a little bit slower play a little bit safer um you know less deaths is always going to equal uh less time but again going into build. summit it's it's still it's anybody's summit. game i think yeah we're about to see some we're about to see some nonsense <laughs> time save for next run let's go Okay, we're about to go uh, into Summit. Are, you, are both runners ready? Yep. Yep. Okay, we're ready to go. Let's get into it. Summit beginning yep. in three, two, one, go. So in Summit, we are going to see um, a throwback to each of the chapters in the game we've already seen in their bookended by um by these kind of just mountain sections right now you can see the runners in what's called zero meters uh this is a quick section it should take under a minute for both runners to complete um it doesn't really uh refer back to any other uh, chapters but uh it's definitely got some some tricky tech in here yeah this is some it's my my favorite level uh at the moment it's just so much fun um, I always beam about how cool I think it is that the developers of this game managed to just recycle the, the same ideas uh, three times for their A, B, and C sides uh, and, and just use the, the same levels done differently. It's just brilliant. And the way they do it for Summit and just break it all down yet again into these smaller leveled sections, it's just great. Like both runners now are coming into the, uh, the Forsaken City level. Uh, we design. Got a, we got a sync up. We got a sync up here. Both runners. Mm, very nice. Absolutely in sync right now. And uh, yeah, and to Smoke's point, it just adds to the uh, the speed running, uh, the difficulty of this game uh, to be to have played the game, you know, all the chapters up until now, and to have played them well, and then to have to go into this absolute marathon level, and. Uh, and perform again um, for you know by far the longest in the longest stretch of the game uh, is an absolute challenge. Absolutely, even even at the highest levels again, this is like a, a quarter of your run easily, and it's right at the end and it's mm -hmm. all together, all at once. You can't stop. You get a little bit of moments of respite when you're uh, you're traveling up through the bubbles with yep. with battling, but apart from that, you are playing the game. That's it. Consistent. Nowhere to run. No. So now we're seeing again the uh, dream blocks here from old site. As we enter, yeah, some it. some incredible movement in on thousand meters. I mean, the dream blocks are just the the best the best name for them. They look dreamy. They feel dreamy going through them. They make a dreamy burr sound. It's 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 wonderful. They do. They're very cool. Both runners taking oh, the left-hand side. Oh, Bean with a misstep there and allowing Bill to pull ahead. This is 
a small misstep, not a, not a big deal, but this is the kind of thing that Bill is going to want to see more of. See, this is this is what I like about the the setup for for the Moomba is that regardless of the the file timer and you know who's going to come out victorious on on the final bit, you still get this truly epic summit race at the end. Absolutely, and uh, it's it's you know you forget about forget about who's in the lead or who's behind. It's just it's so much fun to watch as we see uh, Bill Absolutely. now into the. Uh, Celestial Resort section, uh, which is known as 1500 meters. Yeah, 1500 is probably the, the scariest section of, of Summit. Again, just going back to what we said coming into Celestial Resort, you've got all these cycles to deal with. In 1500 meters, they're so fast. Some of these rooms are so frustrating. Yeah. If you get death cycles, if anything you know, starts tilting you, you can lose so much time here. Yeah. I put so much time here in the past just getting tilted by certain rooms the screen that bill is on now especially um especially punishing this long screen where if you uh, take a death and you have to go all the way back um you can see right just like that uh the lead that bill had erased with a couple of uh untimely deaths here on this long screen yeah i think before you learn to do these rooms you know at the fastest for each of their uh respective cycles you really wanted to be learning how to do these rooms consistently. Yeah, clean, and absolutely. To hold on to walls and to, you know, not get hit by the uh, the meatballs. That's that's completely fair. Yep. Completely fair. So the one or two second time loss isn't a lot compared to the, you know, twenty seconds maybe that you're gonna lose on, on redoing some of these these rooms. Yeah, and that's something that you just learn uh, learn over time. Some screens are, are absolutely more valuable than others, and. Uh, like the final screen, uh, the final Oshiro screen, or that screen that we were just uh, referring to here, 1500 meters. Very important to know which screens are worth kind of taking a chance on and which screens you just want to play it smooth and safe. Yeah, absolutely. There's, uh, there's just so much time to be lost in 1500 meters. Both runners fact, now at, at almost this point uh, in the game, each screen. Yeah, both I'm runners uh, simultaneously to 2000 meters almost. Again, this is the uh, callback to the Golden Ridge, so we're going to see uh, some wind and some snowballs and some bubbles and all that. Yeah, luckily all these all these screens are, are shorter than their, their main level counterparts, so we don't see too much wind, we don't see too many snowballs, mm -hmm. but the screens that we do see them on uh, can be extremely punishing. Just this one that, that Bean's on now, hoping for just a, a clean... Uh, pass oh, this Bean room. is going for the uh, a really uh, interesting skip here called the Auto Scroller Skip. Skip, as we mentioned earlier, Auto Scrollers are slow, and we don't like slow. So one of the techniques here actually allows you to avoid the Auto Scroller completely. Squeeze yourself through a tiny gap. There we go. He got it. And that's the uh, Auto Scroller Skip. Skip. Nicely done. Yeah, it's really been a master of your inputs as the Auto Scroller Skip. Too. It's not particularly the hardest trick. It looks very cool and yeah. it looks extremely difficult, but it's really just been on top of your inputs and, and knowing when to do them. Um, it's one that I'd suggest learning, honestly, because it looks extremely cool. Yeah, it looks very cool and is, is not that tough. And you could see uh, Bill opting to just play uh, that screen normally. And that's, again, just goes back to the, uh, the internal struggle because uh, the bean taking the death there and then performing the skip was probably the exact same amount of time it took for Bill just to complete it casually. So you always have to kind of weigh your options in terms of, should I try maybe a tricky strat that may end up costing me time, or should I just play it uh, play it casually? Chris has just pointed out, speedrunning tricks are all about doing the right inputs at the right time. It's very wise. This, thank, this, you, uh, this thank you, Chris. <laughs> is very very true chris just watch the uh watch the world record run and just do the same inputs and uh there Absolutely. you go it's pretty free marlin even has his controller on the screen for his world record run so oh. you've, you've basically got no excuse it's pretty easy. if you uh if you don't have a, a 26 at this point both runners synced up into 2500 meters you'd love to see that you'd you really love, love to see, to see it, it. Hey, Pleb, welcome in. So 
So here you'll recognize the uh, mirror temple aesthetic here. We're gonna I love see, this uh, section of the... Uh, there's some very cool tricks in, in each room. Yeah, you can see the bean, its, the bean uh, screen right now is performing one of those tricks where you, uh, and Bill as well, where you um, manipulate a, a couple of little wall jumps here and you can dash twice up through this narrow uh, corridor spikes. I think both of them have been watching Army's uh, Speed School video. That's it. Army, one of the most uh, inspirational speedrunners out there. Honestly, just all the tricks. Yeah, very... Any uh, trick that you want to learn, just go watch the Palm Top Tiger. Just a speedrunner at heart, the Palm Top Tiger. Yeah. Born to speedrun. And the bean here showing another uh, small optimization where normally you'd have to hit these switches and open the doors. There you go. Looks like that. Uh, you can also uh, completely avoid hitting those switches because the developers left just enough room there for you to um, just to sneak underneath. Yeah, Bean has to think at this point that this has got to go on speedrun.com. I've got to, uh, I've got to be hitting some tricks here, and that's it. Just taking the time to decide, you know what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do door skip a second time. It's not worth it. Very nice little skip there from, from Bill. I really like that screen. Oh, door skip letting Bill down. It does get tricky there sometimes. As uh, the bean enters the uh, final climb here called 3,000 meters. Once again, this is not a, not a throwback to any prior screen. This is a unique challenge here. And uh, we're seeing the first instance in the game of, uh, of downwind. Yeah, so the downwind section I used to really dislike, but there's some very cool strats in, in downwind section, actually. And it's just getting used to that feeling of, you know, everything seems like I'm not quite getting as high, mm -hmm. but you can still get just as much speed, so you can still do a lot of the downwind section very fast. Yeah, we're also seeing here uh, another kind of a new element, whereas previously... Uh, you would kind of get a checkpoint as uh, each screen transition, but there's not as many screen transitions here, so you can see instead each runner kind of hitting these flags uh, that count down from 30 uh, all the way down to 1, and they act as the checkpoint, so if, uh, if the runner dies, they're going to uh, start all the way back at the last flag they touched. Yeah, absolutely. We've got Bill just uh, coming into the, the same section now. It's still, uh, still anyone's game for this, uh, this summit section. I know that Bean's a big fan of collecting all of the flags, he was telling me. He likes to collect every single one of them, he's not going to be skipping any flags. Not even flag five? No, 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 he said wow. that flag five is his favorite. Oh my gosh. Yeah, flag five is uh, Bean's favorite, so okay. we're going to see him collect that one with, with some pride, I believe. <laughs> but there is, um, yeah, there's a few, there's a few cool strats in, in 3000 meters for, for skipping flags, but you put yourself at a little bit of a, mm -hmm. a disadvantage sometimes if you're if you're not particularly confident, especially when you're going for PB. If you're not particularly confident about hitting tricks, it can be uh, it can be difficult. Yeah, it can be you, scary. If you accidentally skip like flag two, <laughs> and you're on PB pace, you know it's pretty scary. Yeah, <laughs> it can uh, it can make your entire chat extremely angry at you <laughs> at the same time. I know, we've seen some, some lovely stuff here. Been now entering the, well, as an end, the updraft section of some of which I used to think is very cool, and very nice, but it's very slow. You're very just floaty in all the wind. Um, and it's kind of annoying. Whereas downdraft, downdraft's just fast the whole way through. There's a lot of floating around. I'm not, I'm not a fan of the floating. We see flag nine here on on bean side which is probably one of the scariest parts of uh of the casual playthrough honestly i, I remember it taking me so long to work out how to do it i think once you get you know into to learn the speed run you've done it more times than once or twice it's actually quite a free flag to do but it can be scary here comes flag five. Oh, he does. He collects flag five and a flex. He kind of flexed on it as well. I wanted to make sure he got that flag. <laughs> That's my guy. That's my guy.
My, all I'm, about the flexes. Haven't touched Flag 5 in so all long. All about Celeste Squish. Flag 5, very dusty. Flag 3 now, one of the uh, more annoying flags in my estimation. I really don't like Flag 3. You have these awkward dashes through this area and then you have to manipulate a feather and you have to... Another dash up here, it's, it's a very tricky flag. I'd say it's the, the place that I complain about my controller the most is Flag 3. Just blaming ghost inputs and, and stick drift and anything that I possibly can. Here we go, boys. It's flag one, the final ascent here, and it looks like Bean, barring a uh, massive uh, technical failure, is going to finish I'm saying up is that a with flag a one death PB. is probably the biggest flex. So we're going to see it. No flag one deaths. What a PB! Congratulations, Bean. That was, uh, that was very. Oh my impressive. god, I got sub forty-five. <laughs> sub forty-five and sub forty-four at the same time. Forty-three thirty for Bean. Go. Let's actually go oh, yeah. and uh, let's also keep the energy high and keep the uh, good vibes in uh, for Bullet Bill. And a nice clean finish here to Summit. Very nice for that session. Shouts to doing, Matt Thorson. Doing those inputs there, the left and the right on analog stick. Unbelievable. So impressive. Analog is actually the truth. <laughs> Eleven votes for downdraft being better. I'd love to see it. Very actually, very clean last few flags here from Bill. And he's gonna wrap it up at just under fifty minutes of forty nine fifty eight. Very nice. Very GG nice. both runners. GG. Got both runners. I know that feeling all too well of uh the big deficit in the end of the uh the moon breakup. I know it well. But two very nice runs, some very nice tricks on show from both runners. GG New guys. PB there for, for Bean. Bill not too far behind. Still with the sub-50. Sub-50 still a, a huge <laughs> impressive thing in this game. Not You'd taking anything and, away uh, from uh, absolutely. how and, good it is. And it's not. It's an added, added element here, the Moonberry Cup. Again, racing rules. You can't reset, um, which is really tricky for a lot of people, myself included. Just the fact that... <laughs> Uh, you would have maybe already given up on a run, but you have to push through. It's not the easiest thing to do. So thank you guys so much for racing today. Yeah, thank you very much. Good job to both runners.